जय श्री कृष्णा चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाता श्रीवासरी गोर भक्त हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो या प्लीज स्टॉप मी व्हेन एवर यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चंस और डाउट्स एंड वी कैन रिपीट so like i was saying that uh, this is many years that uh, i came across uh, this understanding of the relationship between um is this working relationship between uh, health and spiritual practices to the very point i was feeling Uh, that i might if i mention it i might minimize the spiritual aspect of uh at the activities oh is it just uh health benefits no so i was very much in doubt then i came across some quotes from shri bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur so i feel really happy that it is okay so now i can't find that quote so i'm asking bhakti vikas maharaj please help me find that quote that uh, there are material benefits which may not aware but also we are we want to be minimizing because obviously ultimately everything comes from the supreme lord krishna you understand and uh, even health so he comes in the form of danvantri to give us health the knowledge of ayurveda and health right so everything is interconnected so uh i still have lot inside i have small doubts not to mention too much uh of the health benefits so i need but we can smile to help me remove those doubts <laughs> okay from bhakti siddhant uh, saraswati sports any comments on that okay any so i would have a question about what I think we should leave that until she comes back on again next Saturday or some other time, yeah? Because she is the person who went into so much technical detail. So there was no way to understand that. Yeah. So actually, she is available personally, and she's in our group, so you can contact her and get your answers, so we can put it in the group as well. Okay? So yeah. So what we were talking about having. manifesting your dreams by following shri lakshmi's instruction is uh, reading krishna book and our devotees dreams are to go back to god and or to have association with the supreme lord and his devotees or entourage that's our goals right either in the spiritual world or here <coughs> so that's why shri lakshmi said to read the books at night and then hopefully we have good dreams and we catch our dreams in the water and we got to taste the water by the way the potentization i was seeing it at a very young age 6 years old when my mother used to read ramayana mahabharat continuously every day after mahabharat is finished she start ramayana every evening we would have like shri prabhu mentions in the books that 50 years ago people would get together uh, in the evening and read from the scriptures or perform drama so i grew up like that so every time she would have a gathering we would have a little cup or most likely copper cup of water while we are reading and also rice grains in the hand people would get hold rice grain while we are listening to the katha the whole time like this and the water is there so after the katha is finished we give the rice grain out to the birds and the water everybody gets from the cup in the spoonfuls so we get water nice water and now after so many years i understand so people still do that so this is an ancient technique of potentizing your water with spiritual potency so imagine like mahabharat and ramayan coming into every cell of your body so this is what i mean we are not giving any health uh, um regime or health what we call it medical advice these are for bottom health regimes that enhances our lifestyle all right anybody else followed that when they were young in india or other places other cultures 
where you go and remember uh, reading, studying, anyone? What was happening in Christian cultures? Would they recite or read or memorize or tell past times of stories? No? Oh, there's a similar thing with Holy Communion. Please, can you speak? Yeah, there's a similar thing with Holy Communion. Yes. Where, you know, the priest does a prayer and then prays over the bread and the wine. They uh, say it turns the, it doesn't turn it into the blood and the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. By the sound vibration of the prayer. Very good. So it's me, a question. Okay, so what second point that we mentioned the other day was earth being. So what happens is, uh, is something funny. Somebody told me and reminded me. I make sure I come out on the right side of the bed. And before you put your foot on the bed, we respect Mother Earth. Just like you see people in Bharat Natya and uh, other Odissi dance, they pay respects to Mother Earth before thumping. So they ask for forgiveness. So similarly, in the Vedic culture, we have a wonderful prayer for Mother Earth before we put our feet. So they are, this is what I heard from Ayurvedic doctor. You, before you come out of the bed, you touch your hand, right hand, on the earth. Why? Why you say the prayer for Mother Earth? Beautiful prayer. But the amazing thing is this middle finger is like an antenna. It touches the earth, so you get earthing. Remember, everything is energy. So earthing is grounding. So that is the second reason. That is the health benefit. You touch it. So what happens while we are sleeping, we are actually traveling in ether in many places, many universes, with our mind, with our subtle mind, and our dreams or desires. Uh, we are out of the body when we are sleeping. So to come back in the body, this would help. Okay, so this is called Ardhi. So I requested everybody from last week to please go and check in Google. There is so many new articles regarding Ardhi. One baby would not stop crying until Somehow or other, they found out that if the mother walked bare feet on the earth outside the ground, the baby would stop crying. And this went on for two years. So, it is very important to walk bare feet. In fact, I have my couple shoes here. If you want, when you have time, you can see. Uh, you can bring them. Can you bring these shoes, please? They are both. They are two different kinds. So, uh, this is the modern technology which helps us to bring the ancient sciences. Thank you so much. So, these are my indoor shoes, but it has magnet inside. It's amazing. You can look at them. And then when we go outside, you people some from the West do not like to wear, walk barefoot, then this is cloth. Right? So, you can get either bamboo or uh, what is that called? Uh, sec. The sec. They use uh, jute. 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 Yeah. So this is good. There are all kinds of things, but actually, it's Americans who are more forward than us. They are selling all these things in line in USA and England. They are using all these things. So these are all natural material. And this is magnetized shoes, like that. All. For all the grounding. Okay, uh, there's so much you can find information on that. I won't spend too much except unless you have any question on that. Uh, if you stay high, yeah. higher than, than ground floor, is considered. Not at all. That is why there's so many diseases. And can you, uh, I mean, I should have put my Vata book. Can you show me that? <laughs> yes. It's very artificial. Srila Prabhupada told Vaikuntha uh, Nitai here in Mayapur. What are, no, sorry, was it Jaipataka Maharaj? Yeah, told Vaikuntha Nitai, what are these uh, pigeon hall apartments here? <laughs> you know, in Mayapur. 
we should have we should have more than two stories. So this is a Vata Balance book, one of my three books that were published. Because obviously I had the same issue, staying up late, traveling, computers, cell phones, not enough sleep, anxiety, worry. Then of course I got help. This is uh, under the guidance of uh, Sananda, Dr. Sananda, seventh generation Ayurvedic doctor and JPS, Jaipataka Maharaj disciple. He left his body, this person already. But he personally looked through my book and guided me and it's amazing. So anybody using those items and living on the higher floor has Vata imbalance. So this book tells you how to ground and even while you're there, there are some new techniques that has just come out. You attach it to a wire to your bed and have an earthing system. So it is very important. Uh, earthing, as I said, there's unlimited thing we can keep continue talking. Just see, after Kirtan, dancing, chanting, we are so high, right? Shila Prophet's formula was there in, uh, what was Mantra Rock Dance? Stay high forever. These were the first flyers. Stay. So we literally go up very high with our, um, how scientific is it to have Prema Dhani after the dancing and chanting? Prema Dhani means you're putting your head to the ground and your limbs, everything. So you immediately ground it. How scientific is that? Isn't that amazing? So that's what I mean. Our process is so scientific that at each and every ritual is hundred times more beneficial than we realize the benefits. So um, uh, coming back to obesities, Last time we also said about how the Goswamis in Vandavan pays 1,000 obeisances. So think about it. What are the benefits they get? Actually, it is already in our notes. Uh, first of all, it makes you humble, detached, forgiving. And also bodily, you are in shape, right? So all this is very, very scientific. <laughs> Unless somebody wants to add to it, it is already in the group about all the qualities that you get from paying obeisances. Uh, those are some of the daily activities, but I'm interconnected after because of your question of uh, grounding. Uh, can you hear me? Are you all right on this uh, video chat? Can you hear me? Are you okay in the video chat? Everybody hear me? Okay. Still on, more people coming. So, uh, as I said, uh, we going, how, what is the system that we are going? What we are going to do, we are doing is step-by-step uh, -step morning duties when you get up. Now, this is the thing I didn't mention last time. And it is so beautiful. It's so wonderful that what we have it in ISKCON. It is called DT Worship Handbook. Hidden behind the closets, under the Pujari's cupboards, in every DT department in 800 temples or 900 temples around the world. Now, this is a gem of a book. Why would you hide it? Only for Pujaris and Brahmins? No. This, everybody should look it out, actually it's on Google. Deity Worship Handbook, which tells you which direction to face uh, for taking bath, for eating prashad, for cleaning your body in the morning, and how many times to wash your hands, and how to wash your hands with what, right? So. I could not wait to share this information. It's all there. A, B, C of spiritual life. How to take a bath. And then last time we talked about, actually it's there in the book also. Why first you should wash your face, uh, brush your teeth before you take shower. Many people don't know. It's the best people in the best. Now Indians don't even know. You see in so many streets actually 
this may not be Hindus, but the Hindus take up that quality of saying rushing on the street. You know, it's muchi, right? So, in the Diti Worship Handbook, it tells you, first brush your teeth. And then yesterday, last week, we talked about tongue scrapers. Why? They are gold, silver, and copper. What are the purpose? Sunitaji also mentioned, according to your body type, you use those different tongue scrapers. Now, I call it nano technology. <laughs> nano re uh, remote control. I call it micro, what is it? Uh, is it? Yeah, micro remote control for ear acupuncture. See, every part of your body is in your ear. In fact, the body has many uh, points. Just like most of us are already familiar with reflexology. Some people are only familiar with foot reflexology, but no. The reflexology points are everywhere in your body, including your arm. It's amazing. This is thanks to the Chinese therapy because they also have a meridian system. It's very similar. So, this is micro, I call it remote control for the body. Micro. Because it's so tiny. In fact, uh, I was hoping and we had invited and the doctor had agreed to come. This is Dr. Garuda right here in Mayapur. He does this technique using mustard seed technique. Mustard seeds. They are very tiny and you put them on your ears or in the arm, on your palm. And these are micro, very tiny points. And it heals your disease or ailments. It's amazing. So we have an expert right here in Mayapur, Dr. Garuda. He does sujok therapy. Sujok therapy is compared with the, uh, holding or your fingers and thumbs. It's amazing. But just because we are not aware, we think, oh, this is a joke. What a crazy thing. Wait till you see. I can't sh uh, wait to share with you some amazing techniques where you can get rid of your pain in literally two to three minutes external use so by krishna's arrangement i'm meeting therapies from around the world and i'm learning these different techniques not that i'm expert at it only thing is i'm aware about these things so we can share that with the people who are interested so they can go deeper in the knowledge Okay, so that is micro uh, remote control <laughs> of your body. How do you use it? Self care after your tongue scraping. Then, okay, we're going back one step. You take your bath. How do you take your bath? Shower is very bad. And to see shower, the negativity of the shower, please go in the website called research center was it spiritual science spiritual science research center i will have that in my handout okay they have done so much research on all these vedic techniques spiritual science research center it will show you with pictures how bad it is for you taking shower bucket bath where you invite all the ganges in the bucket with the mudras Ganga, Gomati, Saraswati, Yamuna. Invite all the rivers in that water, right? And that is done with the mudra. And somebody who's doing Diti worship, they already know how to do the mudras for inviting the rivers, especially the people who do yagya. So imagine you taking bath with all these beautiful holy rivers. Why mantra and mudras? So remember, I advertised the flyer, said mantra, mudras and mandala mandala is so exciting in fact if i can have my diwali book i'll show you so as i say as you can tell i'm so excited to see you all because of your interest there's so much amazing uh, information to share so here this book also has the science behind mandalas 
there is such unique science regarding mantras, mandalas. So the mandala I have written in here many benefits and scientific reasons for we call it rangoli or polam or mandala. Why do you think we have it at festival? Every Hathi festival we have beautiful mandalas, right? So there is scientific reason. I'm not going to go, but you can purchase this book and read about it and we're going to talk about it when we come to that point. Right now, we are still at the point of taking a bath. <laughs> Isn't that true? Yeah. So after bath, in the Bhagavatam, it mentioned two to three times. Two times I know for sure. It says, in the Kali Yuga, people think that they have completed their bathing simply by pouring water or whatever rituals they do. It's not called complete. That is not complete until what? Any guess? Any guess? Wonderful, that's the correct answer. Shila Prabhupada mentioned a couple of times in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Bathing is not complete until you have tilla on your body. Then it is complete. It is part of the ceremony of bathing. So, the tilla. There is a book called by Barbara Brennan. It is called Light of Hands. Hands of Light. Hands of Light. This is a very important book about Reiki, how it started, what it does, how it works. Why am I bringing this? Because we need some scientific evidence, right? But the tilak itself are 12 energy circles. She mentions that. The 12 energy points in our body which brings in universal energy, that is according to them, but for us, Guess what? It's compared to Narayan Kavach and the sixth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Hmm? During the Kavach, you put all the names of Vishnu so it protects you. So, similarly, Om Keshwai Namaha, Madhuai Namaha, Govindai Namaha. So, we are inviting the Supreme Lord to reside in these 12 places to, to deflect the negative energy. So, you know in the Bhagavatam it says a Vaishnava is considered a walking Tirtha. So the word is Tirtha Pad. They are walking temple. They purify the whole universe, the whole world, simply by their walking. And especially it says many times about person who wears Tila and Kanti Mala are walking Tirtha. So we take everything for granted. But Manushya Nam Sahasretu, out of millions of people, only a few people take the bhakti. Brahma De Brahmite Kon Bhagyavan Jeev. Guru Krishna Prasadha Bhaya Bhakti Rakavit. So this is very rare opportunity. And Vaisnavs are the saviors of the world, especially if they have Dila and Kantibala. <laughs> so now you see. So that is a part of the ceremony of bathing. But then we come to what? Your clothes. So, very important to wear cotton clothes. But amazingly, because it makes me laugh, Srila Prabhupada mentioned again two, three times, one should wear clean clothes. That means not wear the same clothes without washing next day. I mean, this is mind-boggling. How much detail? Because people have tendency like that in Kali Yuga to wear the same clothes. So he says, one should make sure they wear clean clothes. <laughs> this is amazing. Right? So cotton clothes and that's why when we go on the altar we wear cotton clothes. You know? But uh, I'm so happy to see many foreigners also regularly wear cotton clothing. <laughs> you know? So... Okay, what next after that? Your clothing, bathing, huh? Eating. Sorry? Eating. No way. Mangal Arti time eating. 
<laughs> no, you pay respects to your guru before you come out of the bed even. So let's go back one more step, okay? Uh, pardon me for that. That is called yoga nidra. You're still in your bed. Remember I said we are traveling all over the universe. Our mind is going all over. Even, even before you come out or if you want to come out of your bed, you're still in the bed coming back a little bit to your consciousness. So what do you do? You do yoga nidra. Yoga nidra actually acknowledges every part of your body so it's not numb. Remember when we lie down our body becomes numb that's why it's very important to have activity right dancing for mangalarti chanting walking going to the yamuna going to ganga for bathing that way activates your body and gives you circulation but before that cold bath gives you circulation so we discuss it's a very common knowledge having cold bath, which means you won't spend too much time bathing quickly in the Gangas and Yamuna and all the rivers, bathe very quickly. And bathing brings me the Kaupati Sophia. So maybe how we can do that? Yeah, I think we can. So, uh, Sarvatik Babu gave a seminar on Varnashram and he said Varnashram starts with cows, and land. So how we respect the cow? Just bring me here. This one and the other one. So we're so fortunate, even though while I was in England I was using these products. They are made here in Mumbai. But we have this cow party, P A P H Y party, cow party. You can look it up. It is so amazing the products you can bring in the center. So so these are punch Tatwa, they call it Panch Tatwa, but they are Panch Gavya products. Milk, ghee, yogurt, Gomutra, and cow dung. If Krishna bathes in these, now we get the opportunity to bathe on all this. It's amazing. It's such beautiful soaps. Right? So they are all different nice scents, and they are the cheapest. In Mayapura, all the soaps you can buy. So, you know, if you buy other soaps, they have cow tallow in there. Beef tallow. All the products from the body of the calf. No, there is the orange. This one, orange. So, uh, yeah, so, okay. so this one, I told you five products, right, from the cow. But this is the most unique product imagined to be bathing in saffron water. I know we are used to eating saffron sometimes, sometimes because it's very expensive. But bathing, honestly, I want you to try this before you go home. We'll open it up, wash your hands in here. Anybody has skin rash, immediately. You will see the relief. It's amazing. You know, here we perspire a lot, so you get some rash. Not only that, but it clears your face. So, I've been asking them to make a big, bigger one because I use this all over my body instead of just the face. So, you can pass this on. It's called Face Wash, uh, Saffron Face Wash. Amazing product. So, uh, these are from Cow Party, so we respect that they are making these products using cow products and stuff. So where are we? Bathing, clothing, yoga nidra. So we wanted to do some time and we have time, we'll do it. You do yoga nidra on the bed so it actually activates or acknowledges every part of your body. And then you become active like that. It is very important, it is part of yoga. Yoga Nidra. And we brought it the topic last week and everybody rode up laughing because we thought it was like Mahavishnu, we lie down and sleep. No, it's actually opposite. Um, what you do is you start from the feet and it's good if you're lying down on the ground. You can do it any time of the day and I've heard it after lunch is good. But you can lie down in the ground and then 
you call out to your toe. I relax my toes. I relax my soul. I relax my foot. I relax my ankles. I relax my leg. I relax my knee. So what you're doing is acknowledging every part of your body. Why are you doing that? That it actually relaxes. Because they were numb. Remember you will sleep. It takes less than five minutes. And you, it's good mentally you go to that part of your body so you actually acknowledge it. This is similar to intentions. Remember when you do Ekadasi, you're supposed to make intention, a wow of how you're going to chant or fast on Ekadasi. Either you're going to drink only water and fast, either, or you're going to have juices or fruits or complete fast, or you can eat three times, it doesn't matter. It's still considered ekadasi because you're not taking any grains. So it's very important to make intentions a day before. Why? So the body is prepared. Otherwise it gets shocked and then you become like, oh, I wish I could eat this. When is ekadasi going to be finished? I want to eat this. I want this is what happens. But if your body is trained to do these intentions, you will not feel hungry. And the other thing you can do is increase your japa. The more you chant, the less hungry you will be. And that's the purpose of Ekadasi. What to speak of getting thousand times the benefit. Right? So you go through every part of your body and then as soon as regarding yoga nidra, when you finish your whole body, including your eyelids and your pupils, and you will feel every organ, every part. You can even mention the internal organs if you want. You will feel so relaxed. And then what you do, you pay obeisances to your Guru, to the Supreme Lord Krishna. That is Yoga Nitra. But you can do a couple times in a day if you like, if you get too much stress. But it's very nice to do in the morning like that. And then, of course, we all know about yoga asanas. We mentioned, and Prabhu had a question about Surya Namaskar. Surya Namaskar is considered king of exercise, of all exercise and king of all yoga. So we will have the poster or in our chat book. So, Surya Namaskar. Once you learn about it, some people can do actually Swami Ram, they have seen it do 108 times in half an hour. Why is it a king of yoga? Because it gives exercise for the whole body, every body and organ. So that's very important. But we haven't learned. I, I'm so sure the Guru boys must be learning that. Right? So. This is the natural technique that we do Surya Pranam. Okay, so I beg your pardon because one thing leads to the next and so much learn, so much to learn. So Surya Pranam, you have seen local Hindu people, what do they do? They take lota with water, offer it to the sun god, chanting prayers to the sun god. And Srila Prabhupada mentions many times, if you want good health, Pray to the sun god. But there's Surya Pranam and there's a science. They are standing barefoot on the ground and you have a lot of full of water and that's how you worship the sun god by offering Kenji's water, chanting mantra. But while you're doing that, here is the scientific part. The sun reflects the lights in the water and makes the color of the rainbow. So what happens? That color actually uh, corresponds, that color touches our chakras. So all your chakras of your body gets balanced simply in one minute by offering water to the sun god. And your chakra is balanced because you have the mantra, you have the water which reflects from the sunlight, giving you this beautiful rainbow color. 
which is nothing than our chakras, color of our chakras. Isn't that amazing? Did anybody know that before? Yes. You knew that? Wonderful. Thank you. Very nice. So you know the Surya Purna? Uh, you know the prayers? Sorry? I know it's, uh, I learned it from my mother. It's called Om Grane Surya Ino. Can you speak up, please? Om Grane Surya Namaha. See how small it is. Om Grane Surya Namaha. So, uh, in order, I'm going to repeat this. Remember, I said we have a prayer for Mother Earth. We have to find a Sanskrit prayer. I recommended that Jeffrey Armstrong, his group was an ex uh, disciple. <laughs> We said an initiation from someone else. Jeffrey Armstrong is teaching very vigorously to new age people the science of bhakti yoga. I think his name if I'm not wrong, was it Buddha Tan Guru? No. Might be wrong because I'm mixing up two people. Anyway, he lives in Canada. He is an astrologer, written many books, so in his website you will try to find if not please contact him directly to get this beautiful prayer from Mother Earth, for Mother Earth. Besides that, uh, you know there is a, a, a school in England which is specially teaching uh, Sanskrit. It's called St. James School in London. And uh, it's been there for many years and they are mostly all Western people. They are not religious. They are not associated with any organization they purposely want to teach Sanskrit so there is a graduate many people have graduated and she sings beautiful prayer she's one of my Facebook friends I'm trying to remember her name something like that guys yeah so you know who might be so you can bring her, she sings beautiful prayers and we'll bring that out for her. So thank you for sharing that sun from Surya for now. And then we talked about a uh, little bit about uh, Surya Namaskar being the king of yogas. It doesn't take long. Why it is very important? Because actually it brings, when you bow down your head, it brings blood to your Brain. It's similar to doing headstand. Can you speak a little bit about it? Do you know anything about the head? Uh, Surya, uh, I mean, uh, Surya Namaskar. I'm doing the Surya Namaskar. Surya? Huh? No, like, uh, what did you call it? Yeah, yes. Yeah. That's why exercise is more. 12 exercises. Uh, the Surya Namaskar? Well, it's, it's a full body exercise, that's what I know. And, uh, do you do that? Sometimes, not regularly. Uh -huh. But uh, it balances, uh, and you can say after waking up. After waking up, if you do that exercise, after bathing and you know all the good, it uh, balances and opens all the you know whole body. Because opens the chakras and channels. Yes, and because when we are sleeping, we are all you know, just in one place for seven, eight hours. Have been moving. So when you wake up, it just you know wakes up your mind, your body. That's, that's how it is. That's all I know. Yes. And mainly, uh, the, uh, we have to face east. That's that's very important. You can do it in the morning, you can do it in the evening as well. But in the evening, you have to face towards the west where the sun is. That's what my teacher taught me. And uh, yeah, that's, that's that's the main thing. And the main thing is, as when we see Surya, we should see Surya Narayan. Yes. So it reminds us of Krishna. That's the whole idea. Mother Earth, actually I mentioned uh, five uh, devtas, you know, in the morning. We, yeah, so we actually worship, uh, uh, we remember all this and they are all connected with Krishna, right? So Mother Earth, so uh, Mother Earth, then Bhumi, she's the wife of Lord Vishnu. Surya Narayan is Narayan himself. Yeah. And then uh, we take a bath, invite all the Ganges, all the rivers. Hmm? Goddesses, these are rivers are goddesses. 
can be what their means, their mantras. And then, don't forget, the eye after doing Surya Namaskar, Pranam, what you do is actually do sun gazing. And our Brihat Sloka Prabhu mentioned last time that you start off with just 10, ten seconds in the first time, then increase it. 10 seconds each day. Each day, 10 seconds. You increase it. That's how you start off. After that, uh, you keep increasing. And in fact, I've been practicing it for quite a while now. For last two weeks, honestly, I must tell you, I'm not feeling hungry. And it is it's like unbelievable. My friends are worried. Why isn't she eating? Yet I'm doing double the work. I got up at 2.30 to cook all this because I went to bed at 9 or 10. I was tired. This is unbelievable. It's true. I'm experiencing it. Just by sun gazing, you get so much energy. Uh, don't feel hungry. There is an ex-Navy officer. His name is Gene Deport. He's so knowledgeable. He talks a lot about reading, but he's from America. He's been in the Army, Navy. Uh, secret service, everything. So he does sun gazing for hours. He talks about all these things. So please take that opportunity of sun gazing. Uh, while we're talking, this is a health seminar. Yes, said that we can do it during the first hour. Very good. After. Yeah. After the sun comes out, when you see the light, you have one hour. Don't do it now. It yeah. said it should damage. Up to 10. 10 in the morning, you can do it. Because after that, uh, what I've heard is the, the, uh, is, uh, the time changes, like the water time is there, the, 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 and like that. But the sun is hotter, Prabhu, not 10. 8 is even better. No, I don't, I'm not talking about sun gazing. I'm talking okay. about sleeping in the sky. Oh, okay, okay. But the sun gazing says we have one hour when the light comes. So don't do it now, don't do it till 10 o'clock, you know, just one hour, but we can do it in the evening also. Before going down, the last hour we can wait. Look, and he said 10 seconds each day. So next day we do 20 seconds. The third day, 30 seconds. And the, the, the average is 10 minutes. But we need to go slowly, slowly, slowly. But he said, please don't do it outside of the first hour and the last hour. Don't uh, do it first hour from the, from the sunrise. Yes. Yeah, first hour from the sunrise and the sunset. We'll do this, uh, uh, what do we call this, sun gazing. All right, and now we are very honored to have Abhiram Prabhu here. Welcome, he's studied very intensely, many subjects. Can you please introduce yourself Abhiram, can you come here? We are recording. Mandi. Abhiram, our camera is over on that side. Please. Thank you. We are very honored to have Abhiram Prabhu. He is serving many devotees for many years in many countries. In many countries. He is so expert. In fact, he helped me remove blockages for many years. Here, here. And he reads your body. He actually listens carefully without us knowing. The, point, uh, the pain is here, but he knows the point may be somewhere in the wrist. My, point, my pain will be in the upper arm, but he knows the point. So I'm amazed. Uh, of course, he's very... Very heavy, hard stuff. But he said, no pain, no gain. So I said, Prabhu, please, I'm 70. He said, okay, you know what they do in England and other countries? They put a buckler in their mouth <laughs> so neighbors cannot hear the screaming. <laughs> I said, no, I don't want your technique. All I want is adjustment, right? Huh? 
he does acupressure, which is painful. But for me, I opted for adjustment, <laughs> so I don't scream. <laughs> okay, so these are some uh, humorous thing about Abhinam, but please tell us the serious thing. Thank you. Yeah, 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 that one has to be. Yeah, yeah, that one. Love. Minister Abhiram, you have to speak. Yes. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes. Hare Krishna. Yes. Yes, my name is Abhiram. I grew up in Mayapur and Vindavan and Jagannath Puri. So mainly I study in Ayurveda since 2000. So I've been traveling and study all over India, Kerala, Jagannath Puri, Rishikesh, Dharmashala, Udupi, Goa, many more different places, even England, in Israel, no, Israel I was working there, uh, I was working in England, Israel 2010 and 2011 I went to Holland and then I was in EU visa, so I was traveling in Europe and working. France, Germany, Italy, Belgium, and uh, uh, Switzerland. Then also, and I also worked in Europe in two and a half years. And then after I moved to Scotland, and I was in Scotland two years. Then I moved to London, Bhaktivedanta Manor, and I was working there four years. So I basically work on anatomy and uh, anatomy on muscle structure, bone structure and nervous system. And also I work with the and also study continue. Uh, nutrition that uh, what vitamins what it does in our system and Ayurveda we follow the path of the kapha so and uh, also I study Patanjali Sutra the breathing system the way we breathe and uh, they are you know, nature or activity or behavior is related to our breathing system and uh, of course, the chemistry is involved, you know, so what food we eat, according to our food is, you know, we eat that uh, our body structure and our chemistry is involved and the breathing system is why Patanjali explained and why he is, you know, explained very deeply that is very important the way we, uh, the way we function and uh, the, our nature, our behave, our speaking power, you know, and uh, mind, intelligence, ego, it's everything is all worked on breathing system. So it's uh, according to Patanjali Sutra. So if uh, your service is here. Yeah, I'm here, sir. I'm doing service here. I'm here also a chiropractor. I work acupressure, reflexology, and uh, I do anatomy, stretching, yoga, and dietitian. So my my experience and uh, study it guides me to work with the body chemistry or human body. So I work as a diet and stretching yoga and uh, pressure point and 
the adjustment on, as a chiropractor. So I do bone adjustment and also blockage in nervous uh, muscle system. Next time we should uh, get Abhiram Prabhu to speak on breathing. breathing. Very important because yeah. uh, uh, Brihat Shiloka Prabhu mentioned about the breathing also. He said by people's breath you can tell the predict the future. Immediate future and uh, long term future just by the breathing. He gave that information last time. And I have another person, his name is Jolly. He's in Delhi and he's actually teaching breath work. How we get immediately get detox from breath work. I'm sure you know about it. So there are different kinds of breath work. So we will focus on that if somebody is interested in that. So thank you very much, Abhiram Prabhu. And Can you give some example. Can you tell us one phrase you have so we can understand what to do? Oh, chiropractor is the most important one. If you need one to explain. Chiropractor. Yes. Give an example. Someone came to you with your pain here and there. And it's me, right here. <laughs> you got it <laughs> tell, us, tell us 20 years or more, maybe, uh, or, you know, blockages, right? You have. And um, he could find it. And he says, how many years you've been having this pet with you. These are like, what we call them? Uh, what do you call that? It's called uh, blockage. These are called blockages. Uh, yeah. How many years you've been uh, nursing these blockages like as if it's a pet, you know? So the longer you have these blockages, the longer it takes. But his philosophy is he doesn't want to keep coming and get taking money from people or devotees again and again. He wants to do it very quickly. How do you do? How do you do? What, what do you do? Adjustment. Adjustment. Adjustment what body parts like this. Stretching like this. Stretching like that. And some exercise. Stretching is very important. Not now. We don't have time. Sorry. Uh, anyway, so next time we will get him to maybe practice on somebody uh, right here, <laughs> if he wants. If he <laughs> has any help question, he can answer. Yeah, so please uh, contact him. He is so kindly come and visit us in our homes also. So we have an amazing ocean of knowledge right here among us. So we should take advantage and we should give him some time to give us talk on these particular topics. Uh, especially the one about breathing I was telling you. Regarding yoga, the most important thing also he will attest is about headstand is good because then the blood grows to the brain. Can you talk a little bit about that headstand or the blood going to the brain, how it works, what it does? <laughs> First tell the benefit. Just hold it. Just say the benefit, but don't do it right away. Uh, only after learning from you. Okay. No, not me. Okay. Well, I learned from anyone, but then you should, you know. Uh, Sirasan is headstand. Have, yeah. It's called headstand. What? Any, any asana you do, but you have to have teacher, system. Without teacher, if you do anything, this will be harmful or it can be, you know, dangerous. Dangerous. But that can, you know, you can learn from internet. That is not the internet guy will be not responsible. So teacher, we have a books, but you still you cannot, you know, uh, guide ourselves. Reading you no know, books or so many information in you know, uh, YouTube, but that doesn't guide you. 
you have a particular teacher, a still unit teacher, who can explain you and to see your chemistry and your uh, posture. So if you want to have a treatment with me, you have to follow the two, three you know, rules. So sitting posture, walking, you know, lying down, standing, and uh, when you uh, eating or drinking, uh, if you drink, according to my rules, you know, drinking water, at least three times you should breathe, then you swallow the water. And if you, anything you bite, at least 32 times you have to bite. Chew. Yeah, biting them. And if you don't do that, your digest system will be upset. And that food, your body doesn't consume. So if we you know, eat quickly, so your stomach will get upset because our saliva doesn't mix on food. So if saliva is not mixing in food, so it will be difficult for digestion. It is suffering your internal organs, liver, digestive, you know, it's a whole trap. So, Mataji said to uh, handstand. Uh, handstand. Handstand. Yes. It is. And uh, if you have a blood pressure low or high, you should not do that. No. High or low, anyone has a you know, blood pressure, they will feel dizzy. They feel dizzy, you know, high or low. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If they do handstand, they will be immediately they feel dizzy. It is too dangerous for them. So, if it's teacher with you or somebody is next to you who has experience, then you do. Better to not explain because it's very dangerous. Yeah, actually, I was doing this uh, kind of a uh, you know you bring your legs above yeah. you it's like that that mudra uh, and. Uh, I had some uh, problem here, uh, which which uh, you can say. So now I've got pressed, and my, pressed. and my legs I used to feel like you know it's numb. Like no numb. energy, numb. It happened for some time. I had to take some medicine, but it went away. So it was very painful. Not painful in the sense it was very troubling. So very dangerous. We have we have twenty four vertebrae in our spine. And cervical, there is a seven vertebra, is functioning our from shoulder to hands, and some also work in your organs. But thoracic, the middle section, is working our organ, kidney, liver, all the organ, and lumbar is working your uh, leg. So the circulation, the central nervous system. If your posture is not correct, so circulation is not, you know, properly is functioning. So you breathing is, you know, in our breath, there is three things, you know, it's a lot of things, but I count three things. There is oxygen, pollution, and carbon, you know. So how much oxygen my system is need, and so how I have to breathe to have, you know, sufficient oxygen. It's very important. And like a city like a Calcutta or Delhi, some other city, there is more AC, AC producing carbon. Okay. And uh, so small engine, kerosene is burning and is producing pollution. So in city, there is less tree. So we are not having sufficient oxygen. So according to Patanjali, and how to breathe, how to breathe, strongly breathe, and that you can have sufficient oxygen in your system or providing your you know nervous system the, the oxygen or pollution, whatever you absorbing, according to you, the area you are located. But even if you are in a city like a Calcutta or Delhi, 
it's too much pollution, you should take more lemon and water. Drink more water and more lemon because if you have too much oxygen or carbon, you need citric acid, alkaline and vitamin C. So you drink more lemon and more mineral water. So that will detox your system. Because you're breathing, example like if it's my hand is wet, if I throw the dust, the dust will stick in my hand. But it's dry, it will not stick that much. So when I'm breathing, so inside my nose is wet. So dust or the pollution and carbon is sticking. If I'm drinking the water, so keep moving the toxin. So it will go passing through my urine system. Oh, I'm sweating, it's passing through my skin, you know, I'm coughing, so many other ways is you know processing. And if I'm not drinking sufficient water, so toxin is you know I'm storing in my system. So they're not going out from my system. And that will cause one day big issue. Okay. So please. You so know? that brings us the topic of detox, detoxification, right? Yeah. So that we're going to talk next time. Yeah. We have some amazing system for detoxing. Some fast, some and slow. System. Some fast, some slow. But uh, breath work is another one. But uh, I guess uh, we have covered a lot of topics today. I hope uh, this was satisfactory. Yes. And uh, yes, we need to go a uh, little bit more de de details into breath work but the simple one is pranayama which you can speak about actually if you don't mind pranayama anybody can do can you say something about pranayama it is alternate nose breathing yeah say the benefit pranayama the best method you know, to, to understand mind, intelligence and ego. If you don't breathe properly, so you can't understand the, how you get angry, the mind, intelligence ego. Ego how, when, when you, you know, when you get angry, you breathe totally different. It just makes sense. And when you sitting down, be totally different. It's, it, it, you know, and if you're running, you breathe different. And if you in a meditation, and meditation it doesn't come in your ego, and meditation doesn't come in your intelligence. Meditation comes in mind. So, ego, mind, intelligence, ego, ego comes from mis you know, mystic. Mistake and mistake come from two hormones working in the same time. You know, example like you driving car and you talking in phone. So that's the mistake, but we don't understand how does happen. You know, so you driving you breathe different, but you talking in phone you breathe totally different. But when you make accident. It is totally different and after that again you change your breathing system so breathing system is you know every all the time is changing you know because of my nature and also chemistry is involved and you know minerals so many other vitamins is involved so uh, uh, pranayam pranayam you should breathe long whenever you breathe breathe long and there is two places to hold the breath one in the stomach another one in chest if you hold breath in chest you never get angry see that but if you breathe if you hold breath in stomach then you get angry say because the stomach is already too much you know toxin and air also is there. So, people breathing, they long breathe. And when long breathe, 
you know, the lift is, you know, chest is lifting, you know, opening your chest. But if you hold the breath in your stomach, then, you know, your uh, uh, body, you know, it's like, Tense, tense. Yeah. Your body become, you know, tense. tense. And uh, holding breath in your stomach is causing so many issues. You know, there is air in your navi, central air, your navi, navel. Navel is all it's the place the uh, most. Uh, Toxic area, navel, and uh, I give one good remedy: honey and mustard oil, two drop. You mix together before you go night. Clean your navi and just apply this. You know, this two drop, one drop honey, one drop mustard. Mix together, apply in your navel. Just in two weeks, you will see the result. Your skin will get better, you know. Your 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 hair issue, fungus issue, digestive system, you know. Can you explain why? I tell you, six, three or four nights, I'm keeping oil in my level. And I'm sleeping like a baby. I'm sleeping so nice. So what oil? I was using anything. Society, you should when if you drink water, you eating, you talking, whatever activity you doing, you should breathe. With that, you know, fill your you know lungs with the air and hold for a second, two, three seconds, ten seconds, as long as you can hold. You know, and then breathe out and, and just. Take it out as much as you can take it out. You know? And if anybody you talk to, or if any activity you do, and you will be fully enjoyed breathing. And another breathing system that, that today in market, that so in YouTube and so many teachers explaining for the like fast breathing. Fast breathing is you know, good, but it's not good for everyone. So, Gita people cannot breathe fast. Bata uh, people cannot breathe fast. Bafa people cannot breathe fast. You know, so they they are putting in air one category. You know, so in, in, a, in a yoga class. You know, but they are not following the the chemistry. Bata, Pitta, Kapha. Three person has a three different activity, it's three different chemistry. But yoga teacher today they are putting in a one category. But that's why they don't get result. You know, Pita people cannot get result, Bata people cannot get result, Kapha people cannot get result because the diet is different. They need to change, you know, they got into their category, they need to have a, their diet, exercise, breathing system. But Pitta people cannot breathe the way the Kapha people is breathing. Uh, Bata people, totally different function. You know, activity, the nature, the talk, food, taste, cloth, everything. 
So, you cannot put in a one category. So, according to Patanjali Yoga Sutra, we should go who has a experience, who experience breathing technology and to understand the prayer. So, I will suggest to you whenever you eat or drink, mainly drink and eating. If you can focus your drinking and Breathe, you know, eating, then you can control, or you can balance your body chemistry, your mentality, your speaking power, your, you know, bhajan uh, life, sadhana. You know? When you, if, when you eating, if you chew more than 32 times, chew, you buy, you know, chew at least 60 times, 100 times, 200 times. <laughs> as much you chew the food, it will the food you don't have to digest in your stomach, you will digest in your mouth. When you digest the food in your mouth and you swallow, it will immediately you know uh, transfer to different different nutrition. So your stomach will not do hard work. And your energy, the food jar, when you eat, you don't bite food. It goes to your stomach, all energy goes to your stomach. And when you digest the food, and after one hour, two hours, you feel exhausted, tired. And why is that? Because our all energy, stomach absorbing, because to digest the food. And why is that? Because we don't bite the food. You know? So our mind is not, you know, we eating the food or biting the food. Food, what we have in front of us, our mind is not there. You know? So we have to focus. You know? We chanting, our mind is not there. So, uh, Lord Buddha, according to Lord Buddha, he said, you know, you should be focused what you're doing. So, Lord Buddha, one you know, example he gave is to focus your mind. If you have a glass of water in front of you or you, in hand, in your hand, so you meditate the word, you know, the glass of water. So nothing exists in this material world except this water and you. And you that must you meditate. And if you drink this water, you don't have to eat food. You can live with this water. You know? So we chant, we have to chant like that. You know, feedback and me. There's nothing else. You know? So focus fully absorb with chanting. Then you can enjoy the chanting. You know? But our mind is not there because our diet is not you know, correct. Our thought, mentality, society, you know, food, everything is contaminated. You know? Nobody guides you know, us uh, properly. Nobody talks properly. You know? Everybody is misguiding themselves to society, to others. Don't speak to me in I will call you after. So Prabhupada was eating alone silently. So maybe we can try our lunch. No. Here we don't speak, we just eat. Huh? Yeah. Practical workshop. So yes, what's your question? You can just tell you by looking at you. I Pulse can change in a few minutes. So when you're diseased, you five times jumping, your pulse change. See that? You lie down, your pulse change. You're sitting down, your pulse. So pulse reading is wrong. 
is talking about uh, Nadi. Nadi. Yeah, Nadi was a student. Nadi is nobody can take. I give you, you know, one spoon salt. Your heartbeat is fast. Then your pulse will be fast. Isn't it? So pulse is long. So how do we pulse catch? Pulse readers they can't find. Ah, uh, I think we should wait for Vita. We can yeah, meet yeah. him personally, please. Yeah. We are running out of time. <laughs> and uh, sorry. Um, I, we were talking after yoga nidra. We talk about a little bit about breathing. We mentioned about pranayam. Uh, we're going to go more detail into that. Uh, also, intentions very important. Like we do intentions for ekadasi in the morning when you wake up. Actually, I really wanted to speak with you and share with you um, protection, your aura, how to protect your aura. But uh, I don't think we have time. That's the thing you do before you get out of your bed or you meet anybody. You protect yourself, protect your aura before you go out. It's uh, even like visualization. All these are very important. Affirmation, visualization, intention, and protection of your aura. Because we are among many, many people with different energies. So we know. See, look, he's confirming. We have to protect our aura and how do we do that? Of course, we are very uh, knowledgeable that Hare Krishna Mantra can do everything. And I gave you the idea about the tilak of how uh, Reiki people also say how it protects us. But there is a lot more in the way of affirmation, intention, visualization you can do for enhancing our spiritual health as well. And uh, so, uh, next time, we will discuss more on that, because that's a very important topic for everybody. Huh? But I wanted to leave you today with a very enlightening, um, interesting story. How many of you do that? Can you raise your hand, please? So many? Gayatri? Yeah? Gayatri? We do buy three. See, so many. So he was talking about Nabi, and there is a whole Nabi Chikitsa. It's called Chikitsa, means the regime of uh, Nabi Sastra, means the belly button. And you were saying, hey, this is funny, a tiny little belly. Yeah, so it has, it has the area here has 72,000 nerve ending. So that's why when you do Gayatri, especially men, this is new that Shia Prabhupada gave women the Gayatri. So when the men does Gayatri, the two Gayatri are supposed to done standing up, morning and afternoon one. Okay? And the example, why? You stand halfway in the water, and there is the water actually nourishes the 72 nerve endings. That is the reason of doing Gayatri in Ganga. You can see Krishna and Akrura leaving Vrindavan and they stopped to do Gayatri in the water, Yamuna. And this is the reason that you submerge yourself in the water and do your Gayatri and these 72,000 nerve endings get balanced. So, this is a very important science, which I will share with you next time with the Mataji from Spain. Her name is Yashoda Priya. She's got a whole encyclopedia of these ancient techniques by also new one by some doctor in uh, Europe. And she got this whole book with her. And what she does to get rid of heat from her body and cured Lyme disease just by this water remedy on the navel. We'll talk next time on that. You see? So these are all ancient techniques and technology that we have forgotten. Okay? So try and find the mudras for inviting the rivers into your bathing water. Every pujari should know them. Because we invite holy rivers. This is the revival of our memory from Deity Worship Handbook. 
right? And how valuable it is. So thank you very much, and um, thank you for your kind attention. Apologies for length and going over time, but it seems like you enjoyed it. Hare Krishna. Hare mm -hmm. Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Yeah. All glories. Thank you.